Today, I have traveled to Huntington, West Virginia to remember the worst sports disaster in the history of the United States. My first stop is at Marshall University. There is a fountain that they have erected for the memorial of 75 people who lost their lives on Southern Airways Flight 932. It was a chartered Southern Airways Douglas DC-9 domesticated United States commercial flight jet from Stylings Field in Kingston, North Carolina to Huntington Tri-State Airfield near Canova and Cerrito, West Virginia. At 7.36 p.m. on November the 14th, 1970, the aircraft crashed into a hill just short of the Tri-State Airport, killing all 75 people on board in what has been recognized as the worst sports-related air tragedy in United States history. On November the 12th, 1972, the Memorial Fountain was dedicated at the entrance of the Memorial Student Center. The sculpture's designer, Harry Bertoya, created the $25,000 memorial that incorporated bronze, copper tubing, and welding rods. The 6,500 pound, 13 feet high sculpture was completed within a year and a half. A plaque was placed on the base on August the 10th, 1973, reading, They shall live on in the hearts of their families and friends forever, and this memorial records their loss to the university and the community. My next stop is at the Spring Hill Cemetery in Huntington, West Virginia. Marshall University Football Plane Crash Memorial is located in this cemetery. As you can see in front of you, this memorial at Spring Hill Cemetery pays tribute to the 1970 Marshall University football team and others who perished on November the 14th, 1970. After a tough loss in Greenville, North Carolina, Marshall University fans, football team, and staff boarded a flight departing for Huntington, West Virginia. The plane crashed as it was approaching the Huntington Airport, and the lives of 75 people were lost in the worst single air tragedy in the NCAA sports history. This tragic event would change Huntington and Marshall University forever. A memorial service for all of the victims of the plane crash was held on Sunday, November the 15th, 1970 at 7 p.m., the same time Marshall University had been scheduled to play Ohio University. In honor of the victims who perished, Marshall University President John G. Barker and Vice President Donald Dedmon created a committee who created a memorial to those who lost their lives. The committee decided that there should be a memorial at the Spring Hill Cemetery in Huntington because this is where some of the players are buried. In addition to this memorial, there are several other physical sites of memory throughout the university and community. The city of Huntington renamed the street Marshall Memorial Boulevard in honor of the victims. There is a second memorial to the victims at the Marshall University Student Center. On November the 14th of every year, sons and daughters of Marshall from all over return to Huntington and the Fountain to remember and pay tribute to the coaches, family, and friends that were lost on this day. During the memorial service, water to the Fountain is turned off and there are speeches from loved ones who commemorate the loss of the 75 people whose lives were lost. The ceremony and events leading up to the Day of Remembrance also celebrate the resilience 
of the university and the community. It has been said that a picture is worth a thousand words. But in this situation, in this case, actually being here at the site, at the memorial, and seeing all of the mementos left for the people who perished on that flight that night was very sombering, humble, and moving of the sacrifice that those people made in that horrible tragedy. You can see that the whole city mourned the loss of an entire team. The football program was in shambles. Many kids were left orphaned or with one parent. There were a lot of great people lost in this tragedy and it almost ended football forever at Marshall University. At a time when the football program was in doubt, people never lost hope and they wanted to carry on as they thought their fallen friends would want them to do and to rebuild and that's exactly what they did they never forgot the people who gave their lives on that day and in fact every year they set up memorial services to remember them and they have formed a family-like bond and rebuilding not only the football program but also Marshall University itself in this time of tragedy the community held together and it brought them closer through the mourning and the loss of their loved ones the 75 people who perished on that plane as it crashed into the fields in Canova, West Virginia, heading to the Tri-State Airport less than a mile from its destination when it crashed and went down into those woods due to bad weather not be forgotten with time. The 75 that made that sacrifice will live on in our hearts and our minds and our spirits. And as time marches on and rolls forward, we will all come together and remember where we came from, but to also rebuild and be stronger than ever. My next stop is Canova, West Virginia. This little wooden platform overlooks the crash site of where the plane crashed on November the 14th 1970 this overlooks the wooded area of where the plane crashed as you can see there is a monument and plaque dedicated to the memorial and there are pictures and flowers and lots of mementos left to remember the people who perished. The airliner continued on final approach to the Tri-State Airport when it collided with the tops of trees on a hillside 5,543 feet west of runway 11. The plane burst into flames and created a swath of charred ground 95 feet wide and 279 feet long. According to the National Transportation Safety Board report, the accident was unsurvivable. The aircraft dipped into the right, almost inverted, and it had crashed into a hollow nose first. By the time the plane came to a stop, it was 4,219 feet short of the runway 
and 275 feet south of the middle marker. There is an American flag and a memorial plaque erected nearby. And the plaque reads, Marshall Plain Crash Site on November the 14th, 1970, 75 people died in the worst sports-related air tragedy in United States history when Southern Airways DC-9 crashed into the hillside nearby. The victims included 36 Marshall University football players, 9 coaches and administrators, 25 fans, and an air crew of 5. No one survived this horrific disaster. As chance would have it, as I was recording this video, an airplane going in a similar direction passed overhead. As you can see on the approach, this is the trajectory that they were supposed to be traveling to the Tri-State Airport. And as I overlook into the field here, you can see some of the landmarks from old photographs of where the airplane actually crashed all those years ago. This year in November it will be 51 years since that horrible day. It is very humbling to be at the site and remembering and taking in what happened here as it changed history forever. But I am here today to remind everyone and to let their story be heard. The final stop on my visit to Huntington, West Virginia was at the Marshall University Thundering Herd football stadium itself. And if I learned anything about this story at all, is with great sacrifice and sorrow and loss. Dark days may lie ahead, but out of the ashes and out of nothingness, it can all be rebuilt into greatness. And that is what happened in the case of the Marshall University football program and Marshall University itself. But we must never forget and always remember of the 75 people who lost their lives on November the 14th, 1974. May they rest in peace and God bless their souls. After all, they are... Marshall, I would like to take this time to thank everyone for watching my video. It has been an honor creating this video to remember the 1970 Marshall football team who was lost in this horrible plane crash. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. Also, smash that like button. And until next time, have a good day.